In 2021, Nigerians heard various cries and calls for restructuring. Many of those who championed this course asked for the devolution of powers, fiscal federalism, uh, the creation of additional states, the establishment of state police and local government autonomy. Many even said the worsening insecurity crisis in the country uh, expressed the urgent need for restructuring. The president, Muhammad Buhari, in June 2021, uh, promised that uh, there was nothing, or rather said that there was nothing to restructure, saying that those making these calls were naive. These calls are still on, even in 2022, as Shegun Shomi, a spokesperson of the Atiku Abubakar 2019 presidential campaign, has called on the federal government to restructure Nigeria as the nation moves into the new year, 2022. Now, he accuses governors of stealing from their states. However, uh, the question is, how ready are we to restructure the country? Because um, we still have states that are asking for more money from the federal government. There are states who are unable to pay salaries, but are we willing and ready to get back to the issue of restructuring? Well, joining us to discuss this is Achike Chude. He's a political analyst. Uh, we have Professor Eyo Itam Young and po a politician and academia, Olawale Okuni, Director General of Nigeria Intervention Movement. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. My pleasure to be with you. Good evening, Nigeria. All right. Um, I I'm, I'm going to start with you, um, Okuni. It's very interesting that every time we're close to election season, we hear people talk about issues of restructuring, we have to restructure Nigeria. But then the moment those people get into government, that call totally disappears. Uh, under the Buhari administration, the, the president had said that there was nothing to restructure and the calls were naive. But then we saw the APC um, put a, together a committee on restructuring that paper that was gotten at the end of the day is gathering dust somewhere. So again, do we re really believe in restructuring or are we just paying lip service to it and why? Well, thank you for inviting me. We, in our movement, believe in restructuring. We have done researches we have done national consultation, we have done engagement, we have done interface with the peoples of the country. And um, uh, from Chief Enauru to now, we have seen the need for us to rejig what we have as Nigeria, to re-engineer our structure, to re-systemize, to re-systematize our polity. Uh, because in any case, what you continue to have in Nigeria is anarchy, instability, insecurity, etc. And they speak to the fact that something has to be done to the constitutional structure of Nigeria. First and foremost, what you have now that is causing problem is a military decree that was foisted on the Nigerian people. And that can never give you democracy. Because democracy it, it itself must be owned by the people. And you are named. By the people. So what you have today as military decree 24, 1999, we never give you democracy and we never give you a country that is stable. So therefore, we need to restructure. Yes, General Mohamed Buhari worked with us at some point uh, uh, under the leadership of Chief Tony and now of blessed memory. I am up till now pro NACO, pro National Conference Organization spokesperson. And we had a national conference between the 2005 and 2007. And we presented to the Nigerian states a constitution of the people that can make us to have stability and security, etc. What, beca what became people. of that paper? What became of that presentation? Oh, yes, because it was rejected by the ruling class, the people in government. Yeah, I was in government then. Um, General Wari is so naive, or I don't know what has come over him. 
because he was with us in that struggle, which was against a dictatorial state. And then we agreed, even with three of us and even outside, that he was going to implement whenever he gets to power. Alas, some element came around him to the hijack the presidency, either to the security forces or civil service, hmm. and then made that promise to be, I mean, ineffectual. Therefore, um, we continue to have what we have today as insecurity, instability, etc., etc. Nigeria, I want to tell you that Nigeria is a, an amalgam of different nationalities, different backgrounds, different history, different languages. And that is bound to create what you call conflict. And in conflict resolution, you must bring them together for them to agree and form a consensus. So what we are saying by saying that we need restructuring is to say we need a constitutional consensus on the structure of Nigeria, that the peoples of Nigeria, about 200 ethnic nationalities, mm -hmm. as researched by us, must sit together to build a, a grand consensus on how they want to coexist peacefully. Okay. After that, government that is elected based on that consensus will run government. Okay. Because government itself doesn't have the power when it comes to the principle of constitution making. To impose a constitution, I laugh when I see constitutional amendment. It is not, well, you can't amend a military decree and turn it to a people's constitution. That's the point we are making. Okay. And when we are talking about it, so we are talking about constitutional resystematization of the structure of Nigeria. Okay. These are issues that are very deep. Okay. And therefore, that is why um, we have not been able to have security, stability. Okay. I will, I will, uh, I will come back to you. I will come back to you. Let's just hold that. Uh, put a plug there. Um, I'm coming to you, uh, Professor. Uh, as someone who has run within the circles of political uh, politicians and governments, you, you would be in a, a great position to help us understand why the word restructuring is thrown around more often than sat down to be talked about. Again, we have had constitutional conferences. We've had the National Confab under the Good Luck Administration. Uh, like I mentioned, the APC had a, a restructuring committee. That paper is also gathering dust somewhere. Uh, he said that the, gov the presidency uh, is being misled. But what do you think is at the core of this and why we're still here having this same conversation year in, year out. Yes, but, but. Can I hear you? Yes. You, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Professor, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, I think that we lost that connection. Um, okay. Let's, let me come back to you, um, Mr. Okuni. I remember the, the, when we had the national comfort, the APC government was not part of that national confab at the time. And that's one of the reasons they gave us for not wanting to um, use anything or even implement that document. Now, we've also had so many of these conferences. And you talked about the issue of, um, you know, resystemization. I'm going to cut my tongue, with systemization of the Constitution, being that what we have now is not necessarily a document that was put together by the people. But then we have also had the National Assembly go around in different regions when they said they wanted to amend the Constitution, um, asking for inputs. But then when it came down to it, we didn't really see the voices of the people in that constitutional amendment. So this questions, of course, the people that are on the floor of the National Assembly and whose interests these people may be representing. So again, is the power with the people or is the power with the politicians? Well, for now, the power of governance is with the politician. They have hijacked it. And they will never give the people 
except the people forces. If you look at section 8 and section 9 of the military decree called Nigerian Constitution, you will find out that there is no way for the sovereign power of the people. There is no place, no provision. Throughout the Nigerian Constitution, no portion, no provision for the people to make decisions on their country. Unlike Britain, where you had Brexit, you had all kind of, the people go to do referendum. They can do plebiscite. That is not, cannot be called a constitution. That is a military decree, foisted by the military at, the, at their exit in 1999. Nobody contributed to that. And to that extent, you have problem. And so the power of the people have been hijacked by government and by politicians, so to say, and they will resist giving it back. Therefore, the Nigerian peoples, because they are not one, must begin to come together and build consensus. To begin to take power back to the citizens in such a way that the people, the people can have power again. All their powers by all the powers of the people and citizens have been taken by the Nigerian constitution. Okay. which is concerned 1999. And they have not done anything about it. The first thing to do okay. in the Nigerian, all, wait, in the Nigerian constitution, all the palliative and cosmetics that have been done, uh, uh, electoral fund, is zero. It is for the parliament. So you're saying that the, the so wasted they, taxpayers' they money is to do all of these theatrics, and you're saying that the score is zero. constitution, amend it in such a way that the powers of the people can be given back to the people to be able to give unto themselves a country of their own through a constituent assembly or what the people call sovereign national if you want to call it anything an assembly of the people where representatives are elected and then to give unto themselves a constituent of Nigerian people. If they want to decide on resource control, so be it. Okay. If they want to de decide on unity country, so be it. But the powers of the people must first and foremost be restored. And that has been taken by Section 8 and Section 9 of the 1999 Constitution. Hmm. Not a very, um, you know, good update there. But let me, um, Achike Chude has just joined us, and I want to pose the next question to um, him. Mr. Chude, um, Mr. Kuni is saying here that the power of the people have been taken. In other words, we have been restricted. Um, but the issue of state policing is of most importance to me. Now, under the issue of restructuring, we've talked about state policing. We've talked about, um, you know, fairness and fair, fair playing ground for uh, ethnic nationalities. Uh, we've also seen a rise in these non-state actors as a result of the fact that certain people in certain parts of the country feel that they have been shown... Uh, the short end of the stick. And so we've seen the likes of Sunday, Boho and Kanu, um, you know, all of these people agitating uh, for their regions in the country, which has also not necessarily ended well. What can restructuring do in dealing with these issues? But again, how do we even start dealing with this when, according to our first guest, we're being restricted and we do not have any powers? Well, the... <clears throat> the fact that um, people are talking about uh, the possible failure of the Nigerian state and the fact that there is a general agreement that the state has not worked, you know, and uh, the fact that uh, people, it has been proven that people are now more loyal to their ethnic enclave than to the nation is uh, the biggest indicator or indication indicators that uh, all is not well with the country. And that something needs to be done. And there is no doubt that um, people do not feel a sense of uh, nationhood, a sense of pride in Nigeria as a federation. And, 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 and so, uh, and that's why they talk about, about uh, Nigerians coming together to talk about uh, the basis for existing as a nation, as one people under a federal post, you know, constitution, has been on the increase for a very, very long time. And I think it is clear that whether we like it or not, sooner rather than later, that is going to happen. That dialogue will take place because the country cannot move forward if we do not have, if we have not formed a consensus about you know moving forward. 
uh, you know, and then if, if we have not uh, formed the consensus about what we need, the essential ingredients that are, that are needed uh, to be able to move the country forward. Uh, so so that, 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 that is very, very key. But, but regardless of that, you see, that is what we, we you know, there's such a, there's an expression that says that uh, you make the best out of a bad situation. Yes, we cannot find, and under the present circumstance, we cannot get the ideal situation that we want. That and this situation can only happen when Nigerians sit down to talk. And even this issue of talk might not necessarily be among the various ethnic groups in this country, because you have ethnic groups, but not everybody might even want to have this discussion on the basis of ethnic groups. Not everybody believes, you know, that uh, ethnic group, is, for instance, should, should form the premise in terms of uh, the people that are going to get engaged in the discussion. So there are also social groups, there are also professional groups. All of them must also be involved even in the process of talking. You understand, know, whether you are talking about workers, you know, under the ages of either the Nigerian Labor Congress, Union you know, Congress, you know, the Nigerian Medical Association and all of that. All of these organizations are more of you know, centipedal forces rather than centrifugal forces. Mm -hmm. The centrifugal forces are the ethnic nationalities, you know, because they are the ones that are pulling at the scene. You know, if the country does not work, then they don't want to be part of it. But then, for national groupings, professional groups, you have professional groups that are made up of Nigerians from the various ethnic groups also, who are also trying to, you know, uh, form some point of convergence towards the center. So all of these groups, all of these ethnic you know, groupings must be involved in that discussion on how to move the country forward. But what, must, hap really what must happen to bring everybody yeah, to that you know, unified table? To... What must happen? Because it looks Sorry? like... So, yeah, we all understand that they all must come to the table. But what must happen for that unifying uh, conversation to happen? Because it seems that, like, everybody is looking yeah. at it from a different prism. And it makes it difficult to have that conversation yeah. as a whole. Well, well you know, they, they have always said, there's always been this saying that those who make peaceful change impossible will make violent change inevitable. You know, we have seen some elements of, 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 of violence, uh, you know, in the polity because of the injustice within the system, because of the exclusionary politics that is going on in this country. Uh, you know, so that has bred violence, you know, at an unmitigated level. And for us to be able to avoid this, we must stop. Now, what you have said is, is very clear, and it is, it, is, it is important. How do we bring this about? Now, we must also realize that there's a ruling class in this country, a ruling class that is benefiting from the malaise that Nigerians are facing, a ruling class that is benefiting, profiting from the contradictions that are going on in this country. And this ruling class, if not a class, you know, that, um, you know, is, is, is a class that pervades the nooks and crannies of this country. You have them from the north, you have them from the south. Uh, you know, so this ruling class must be dislodged. And perhaps it is, it is the level of pressure that will bring to bear on them that will make them face the inevitable conclusion that they themselves must help in bringing about that process or change, in bringing about that discussion that will have to take place. And I'm talking about members of National Assembly and the State of House of Assembly. This is all regardless of the talk about, about, um, about, about uh, 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 building in different countries based on consensus, you know, among the Nigerians. But the reality is that they are already enjoying the trappings of office and they are not going to sit back, you know, you know, and, and start a process that will liquidate those things that they have been getting from the system. So there must be some level of force that Nigerians themselves must be able to bring to bear. You know, until there is a general acknowledgement that there is no other way we can we can do things in this country except to get to the level of bringing Nigerians to talk. So that, so I guess that 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 pressure must you know continue until it gets to that realize they get to that realization that there is no other way we can get this thing done. We have to put the process in place for us to actually begin the process of discussing among ourselves. All right, I think we have Professor Ayotun uh, Young back. Let me pose this question to, to you, Professor. Um, 
There are those who think that Nigeria is already on the precipice um, with the kidnappings, the killings, all the things that are happening. Uh, but then the, the people who are also saying this are, are wondering, can restructuring, um, you know, pivot Nigeria away from the problems that it's facing? Can it solve all our hydra-headed challenges as we speak? No, uh, look, there's no, there's no magic. Sorry, the word. question is and for the professor. Uh, I'm sorry, the question is for the professor. The professor, dear. Yes, professor, can you hear me? You need to unmute yourself so we can hear you. I'm hearing you. Yes, you go ahead. Me? Yes. Okay. Well, yes, I've done that. I think that you have your television on because we're getting a feedback. The, 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 the issue is... I think that you have... Apologies, I think that we're having feedback from the professor. Um, you need to turn off your TV so that we can hear you and not have that feedback. Quickly, I think we want to take your thoughts before we wrap this up. All right, one minute. Okay. Okay, okay. can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Go ahead now. Okay. Um, the, the issue is what we talk about a democracy, we're in a democratic system. But the democracy is not being brought down to the people properly. So when you don't bring governance system down to the people, you create unnecessary uh, situations that bring about violence and all kinds of crimes and so on that we're experiencing today. The issue of restructuring is, is overdue. You know, and we've been talking about it some years back. There was a national conference on this issue, I think in 2014. There was an agreement between the people on what to do. Uh, when APC came into power, a committee was set up on, on restructuring. They met, they met and submitted a report. It's not being implemented. Recently, the National Assembly talked about constitutional review, including the issue of state patients and other aspects of, of restructuring. But recently, they come up to say um, they've given up on the issue of state creation and so on. The problem is there are people elected into offices that are supposed to represent the constituents. Everybody cannot be in that office. But once these people get into office, they're stuck in Abuja. They don't come back home to relate with their people. And then when the people sit up and make up their minds that this is what they want, this is what they think would be good for them, they're not part of it. And like the last restructuring or the last state creation thing that was, was being carried out, were required to have members of the National Assembly sign whatever uh, position paper the people developed. But majority of them didn't want to sign. The situation in our country is that if you're a member of House of Reps, you want to move from there to Senate, you want to move from there to being a minister, you want to move from there to being a governor, the next thing you want to be president and so on. People want to remain in power forever. Mm -hmm. So if you are if you are a serving senator and they tell you to sign a bill that would, uh, or a paper that will divide your state, you are already preparing to rule over a larger state. You won't sign, and that's what people experience. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the, 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 the thing has not come to pass. But what the solution should be is a referendum carried across the state, carried across the country. But that was done. We did. We had something similar happen recently, uh, Professor. In 2021, we had members of the National Assembly go to their constituents, but nothing really came out of it. So we keep asking and pushing That's for these I'm referendums. Saying. They will come to their constituents, but they will not agree because it, it, it affects their political interest. The decision of the people is not in, in, in consonance with their political interest, and they reject it. That's the issue. But if you come down now, with a referendum proposal to actually pick the, the, the minds of the people, they will not be able to stop it. So mm -hmm. when you depend on them to sign, to agree, to sign the document before submission, before it makes sense to the National Assembly, they will not do that. Because they are dividing as the, the constituencies where they want to rule power over. Do we see this referendum happening anytime soon? Because look, we are in campaign season and 2023 is, of course, the election season. 
Um, how do we also force the hands of these people? Because uh, Mr. Okuni said that our hands are tied. We, the power is not resting with us as it should be under a democracy. He's saying the power now rests with the politicians because they call all the shots. So where does that leave us? Everybody is focused on the elections now, so nothing like that can happen again. Wow. So it cannot happen any time soon because so so, so what is the average voter what is the average voter voting for if his voice is somewhat silenced or there's a plaster put over his lip? Well, you know, with the level of poverty in the land, um, people who make all these strange money they buy votes. They buy votes and there is no way of stopping them. Well, it's really sad. Uh, and, and on that really gloomy note, I want to say thank you to all our guests. Um, Achike Chude, um, Olakun, Olak, uh, Olan, Olakuni, I beg your pardon, Okuni, uh, Olawale, thank you very much for joining us. And Professor Eyo Etim Young for being a part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break to find out what Nigerians have to say about restructuring in the country. And of course, I will be saying my goodbyes right after it. Restructuring of the mind rather than restructuring the physical facilities that we have. We should love ourselves, and that is what is important. If we love ourselves and do things judiciously, do things in the way that it's expected, for the benefit of all, not uh, overtaking one another in a rush to become important, in a, in a rush to become rich, then the benefit of what is given to us by the Almighty God will be seen and shared by all. Nigeria needs dialogue within ourselves. Everybody must understand that this thing cannot work. We must be sincere with ourselves. We are not going anywhere. We are not united. A lot of things happening, things is not working. And I can assure you that it will not work because of the way our government, the system of the government, the system of the government has enslaved and corrupt our leaders. Definitely now, things not the right for our country at all. So a really deep, deep, deep down restructuring. Only God can save us really. Because I don't believe in these politicians. 2023, there's no headway. We need restructuring. Uh, yes, every sector of the economy needs, in fact, is in urgent uh, need of restructuring. Uh, especially the business sector, um, even the educational sector, the agricultural sector, all the sectors are in need of restructuring. Uh, so I think it's high time. You know, There's no point uh, uh, painting it. Uh, let's call it spade a spade. So. Just like the last man said, let's call a spade a spade. It's time for us to sit at the table and say what we want to move our country forward. My name is Mary Anakum, welcoming you to the new year. All through the week, we will be taking a look at 2021 and all the front burner issues that we can still talk about this year. Because the truth is, these matters cannot be left on set. My name is Mary Anakum. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. on Plus Politics. Have a good evening.